Nobody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. And Jacques Nibar has just named his side for the second test against the British and Irish Lions. And quite a few changes. One injury enforced, a couple of tactical, and the return of the bomb squad. A 6-2 split this weekend on the back of what was a very physical performance from the Lions in the second half last weekend. So very, very interesting to see that that's what the Springboks have defaulted back to after, after that performance. And I think that there are some pros and cons for both situations. Um... And I think that we, you know, we'll, we'll obviously still have to see how it goes this weekend. Before you name the side, please do smash a like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. Some very big calls being made. And I think, you know, this, the Springbok team has to, has to respond. So a lot of their big names have suddenly been named, uh, you know, especially in the front row. And I think we need those players to step up. We've got to, got to, got to do better at scrum time. We've got to do better in our set pieces. Because I'm all defense and, and... You know, we need to start also trying to keep ball in hand a, a little bit. And the fact that we've gone with the 6-2 split, you know, means that they're hoping to try and get a much bigger impact off the second um, in the second half. Obviously, with the Springboks, you know, not maybe not being at their full fitness, you know, faded a little bit in the first test. And as a result, I think that's probably what has necessitated the return of, of the 6-2 split um, with Markham and Starden being named in the side ahead of um, Alton Young, who drops out with, um, not, with, with the no-fly half cover. So if we look at the team for this weekend, this is how they will line up. So as I said, the big changes are in the front row. Stephen Kitsov and Franz Malherbe will start for the Springboks. Stephen Kitsov is coming in for Oxen Chair, who is um, actually injured. It was, apparently it was a bit of a sore neck, which kept him from playing the full game over the weekend. Um, Bongi Benami keeps his place, and then Franz Malherbe comes in for Trevor Nukani in a tactical substitution. And I think it's probably the right decision. In terms of what we saw the past weekend, uh, not in terms of Trevor Nukai's performance, I think he's very unlucky to be dropped. But I don't think that, I mean, Francois Herbert had no impact coming off the bench whatsoever. So I think if you're looking at the two tight ends, if you're thinking what, are, what defines them, I think Trevor Nukai probably is a much better player coming off the bench in terms of the impact he can bring. Whereas I think Francois Herbert came on and sort of offered nothing, really. And I think that as a result of that, you know, they're now also going with combinations. You know, Stephen Kitsop, Blongi, Manami, Francois Herbert, that's the... That's the that's the that's the front row for the Stormers. They're used to scrumming together, and I think France Mahoe will probably have a better time going from the start trying to get into a scrummaging. You do have to feel for Trevor Nyakani, who I thought actually played very well last weekend. You know, there was a lot of critics and stuff like that, and he's um, he's really stood up and 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 and, being, and, and was counted. Um, Ibn Ezra Beth Franco Master continue in that lock pairing. See a Cleese and Peace Step the Toya unchanged, but the more abrasive and physical um carrier in Jasper Visa comes in the number eight which a lot of people have been calling for but what I will say is that I think you know it will be interesting to see what happens to the breakdowns this weekend losing Quaker Smith um, means that you know somebody like Stephen Kitzel is going to have to do a lot of um, break, uh, breakdown work Sia Kalis is going to have to do a lot of breakdown work um, we've got a lot of um, players who are going to be very good at the breakdown coming off the bench um, but you know what you what, what you what you what you gain in Jasper Visa's um, physicality and his ball carrying abilities compared to Quaker Smith you lose in his um breakdown work as well as mobility around the park. So very different type of players. And I don't think either of them really fill the shoes of Dwayne Vermeer, who sort of does a little bit of everything. And the back line is completely unchanged. Factor Clerk, Andre Pollard, who I had to play a full eight this weekend. Uh, so let's hope that he brings his kicking boots. So I think those two kicks he left last weekend were a little bit frustrating, but it looked very, very composed in the first half and looked fine. Makazuloma, Pimpi, and Chazen Colby continue in the wings. Let's hope we can get more ball to them because they didn't have much to do last weekend, which was pretty frustrating as a Springbok supporter. Damon De Lindy, Lacanya Am, were pretty much the shining lights in that back line. I thought they were very, very good. Lacanya Am making very big defensive contributions. Damon De Lindy, very aggressive on the front foot as a ball carrier. So those two, we know exactly what they're bringing. Billy LaRue, very good to see it. He's recovered from his injury. Um, he had a bit of a lukewarm performance over the weekend. Parts of his game, he really struggled, but he's a very important player for the Springboks system. So it's important that he um, is part of it there. And then on the bench, Mark and Marks, Vincent Koch, Trevor Nyakani. Vincent Koch covering Lucid, which is, you know, as a result of the fact that we just didn't, we didn't include um, a lot of sort of specials, quite a few swing props, stuff like that. So Vincent Koch will come in on Lucid. Trevor Nyakani will come off the bench at tight head. Lua Diago will come off, come um, off the bench again. And then you've got Mark and and Quaka Smith. So, you know... Expect probably see Ecclesia and Dias Bivisa to be replaced there um, and, and see those two. I, I'm probably quite happy to see Renard Ulster drop out. I think that he's really struggled to sort of make much of a difference when he's come on. But, you know, Quaker Smith and Markham Starden are very good players. You can come on and especially when, as the game gets a bit looser, exploit the breakdown and try and sort of win some penalties there, slow ball down, win some ball at the breakdown as well. So it's definitely a bomb squad type of feel. You know, we've got a Francois Lowe sort of type alternative in Markham and Starden. We've still got... You know the 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 speed and the and the skill set of Quaker Smith as well, and then you've got Herschel Yankees and Damien Willemser, who are your backline cover. So the biggest problem for me is the lack of a second goal kicker. If Andre Pollard goes down this weekend, we will be relying on the boot of of Damien Willemser, which, if we being brutally honest, is probably the weakest aspect of his game. So it's a very very big call to go with a 
two split and back Damien Willemser as the utility back ahead of like a, a, a France Dane, for example. So it's a very big call by the Springbok staff. Let me know what you think of this team as well. We're going to be going live tonight. We will sort of dissect the teams a little bit more. So smash like on the video, subscribe to the channel as well. My name is Steven. Thank you very much for watching and I'll talk to you guys all very soon.